Hi, and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about cleaning up artwork in Photoshop. This is a question I get a lot. So right here you can see an illustration I've done. This is a carbon dust illustration of some fossils I made for my son's birthday party. I'm going to have this available as a print later as well, which is why I'm prepping it in Photoshop. The first thing I'm going to do is hit Command or Control J. Sorry, hold on. Got to click in the right screen. Command or Control J. I just wasn't selected into Photoshop. That's why that didn't work, in case you're curious. Now I have this layer one. All I did was new layer via copy, by the way. That's that command or control J. I say control J for PC people. The reason I always make a new layer via copy is that way if I really mess something up I have this background layer sitting here off in the background. The other thing I'm going to do which is kind of strange but I'm going to create a new fill layer. I suppose it's not strange but it just helps me. I'm going to go ahead and create a solid color fill layer. I'm going to make this white and I'm going to drag this underneath my artwork. What this will do is allow me to see what I'm erasing. Right now what I can do is I can click on this layer here and I can actually start erasing the background. Now you can't see that terribly well. The nice thing about the color fill is I can double click on this again and I might actually for right now pick something sort of obnoxious. I know that sounds strange but what this is going to allow me to do is be, to be able to see where I'm actually erasing and then I can change it back to white or whatever I color I feel like later. I'm going to zoom in and for this I'm actually using a Wacom or Wacom tablet. I always pronounced it Wacom and then I watched a tutorial online and it seems like Wacom is the correct term. I do have in my article, I have a link to the tutorial video I mentioned. It's a really, if you do have a Wacom tablet or Wacom tablet, it's a really good video to show you how to use your tablet. I will tell you I'm pretty new at using the Wacom tablet, so bear with me. The first thing I'm going to do is I don't like the size of my eraser. What's kind of cool is there's a shortcut. You can hit control and option and you can actually move left and right to move your brush size smaller and larger. You can also move up and down to soften the edge of it. I like to have a slightly softened edge because what that does is when you are working on the piece, it allows you to have kind of a nicer transition into the background. What I mean is if you look at my drawing here, you'll see that the edge of my drawing doesn't have a super harsh edge. So it's going to look better if I go and erase this versus if I would go and have a really, really sharp edge. It just allows the drawing to blend into the paper more naturally and look like it was drawn on your pure white background. Now, there are quick selection tools that you can technically go and you can quick select an area and erase. The problem with that is that I've run into too many issues where it picks up too much or too little. By the way, right now, if you notice my eraser isn't erasing all the way, that was actually from something I did earlier this week. I should change this flow all the way up to 100%. So I just realized I didn't have that set correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my size down just a little bit because it's a little too small or too large for my comfort because I want to be able to get in and get this detail. I realize that this is tedious but I am a bit of a perfectionist and so I have found that going in and erasing the edges like this just produces a better result. I can show you some other tips as well in just a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and keep erasing around this edge. And notice I'm not worrying about this outside area. I can do that in a minute. Now what I can show you next is that quick selection tool and that's right up here. I'm going to go to quick selection tool and I can have plus selected. What I can do is I can actually select one of these fossils like so and then I can hit refine edge so you can see what this selection currently looks like. I can actually shift the edge out a little bit or shift the edge in a little bit and you do see a preview as you go along. I can then feather this edge a little bit and also smooth it a little bit. So what this does is when you have that selection and you erase around it, it just gives it a more subtle effect. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now just this fossil here is selected. Now the easiest thing to do at this point is to go Command or Control C, Command or Control V, and now I have this fossil all by itself 
selected and that actually did a pretty impressive job I must say I think this because this is a little more um, has a pretty good contrast to where it leaves off it did work pretty well so I can go ahead and refine this like so now it kind of depends on what you're doing with your illustration in this example I am planning on putting this in a document and arranging them so I'll actually go ahead and show you that because part of preparing your illustrations is going ahead and setting up a document if you're if you're scanning an illustration and you want to use it on a card or on a print or an illustration you're gonna probably take it from the original scan and put it somewhere else sometimes this piece here will be your original but a lot of times you're placing it in a different location so this little guy here is called a branch coral and I'm just gonna label it so I can keep track of what I'm doing I'm gonna go ahead and make a new document I'm gonna make this document 11 inches by 14 inches because that's the size of the print that I want to make once again I could have taken this artwork and moved things around but I find it so, so for example resize these things but the problem is is first of all I have a few different sheets of this oops didn't mean to open that I have a few different sheets of these fossils and then second I just think it's easier to go and put it in one document I'm gonna go ahead and make the background white I could have made a color fill but that works just as well. Here's my branch coral. I'm gonna go ahead and select it and then paste it in here. Once again, control C, oops, didn't mean to do that. Control C, control V, so, or command C, command V. So now you can see I have my branch coral sitting here. I can hit control T and there's my free transform. All right, going back to my artwork, I'm actually kind of shocked how well that worked. I'm going to go back to my ammonite here. Let's take the quick selection tool and try to select just my ammonite. Making sure you're on the layer with your artwork. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to try to, like for example, if you were trying to select this ammonite and if I was still on this branch coral layer, I'll actually show you, it wouldn't work. It'd be like, hey, there's nothing there. It's because you're on the wrong layer. So keep that in mind. Make sure you're paying attention to which layer you're on because it's really easy to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and select my ammonite. This is where you can see where it has issues. This ammonite has these little white areas that it doesn't want to pick up. It is doing pretty well. I will say I got a new scanner recently and I think that is making a bigger difference than what I realized because I'm getting much higher quality images. When I had my old scanner, it definitely would not have done this well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control C, Control V, place this guy in here. I could have softened the edge, but I wasn't too worried about it. You'll notice what I do have though is this little spot here where I can now go in with my eraser tool. Oops, eraser tool, there we go. And I can go ahead and just erase and refine that selection. So once again, Quick selection tool is great for selecting an area, and then you can go ahead and go in with your eraser tool to refine that point. And you can see how there's a little bit up there that I don't quite like how that looks. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out. I'm gonna start naming these so I can keep track of them. So this is my ammonite. This is my branch coral and then I could keep going and keep copying and pasting them. Once again, with this where I have a collection of different things I'm putting together, I can go ahead and hit that Command or Control T, hold Shift as you resize, or just click that little lock, and that keeps the proportions the same, unless you purposely want to distort them for some reason, but usually you don't. So you can see once again how that's blending in nicely now. And I could go in still, like I said, play with my eraser tool some more, I just hit E to jump to the eraser there. And I'm actually gonna, I don't like how much that little bump is sticking out, so I'm gonna fix that. Ammonites do have these little ridges here, but I felt like that one just stuck out too much. Okay, I'm gonna show you another piece. This example, I have all these little pieces that I'm gonna collage together on one larger sheet. I have another piece that I created recently where I just want to remove the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up for you. See artwork scans. 
Let's see, there we go. So this little guy here. I'm gonna go ahead too and turn this. Once again, I'm gonna make a new layer via copy. Once again, I'm doing that just because it helps me keep track of where I am. I'm gonna make a new layer. I could have made a color fill, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make a white layer here. So it's just solid white in the background. I could make that anything I wanted, but I'm gonna make it white. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go back to these selection tools. I'm gonna start with a magic wand tool. What the magic wand tool does, it's a little different than the quick selection tool. The quick selection tool, what it's doing is it's looking for an area that you can tell it's one object. So for example, when I selected this leaf, it easily selected just the leaf because it sees that there's this sudden contrast difference between this dark edge here and this white here. That's how that quick selection tool works. In this case, what I want to do is try the magic wand tool. The magic wand tool selects a color range. So if I click the background, can you see how it actually selected all of this background and left the other areas around it. Now that worked quite well. You can see how it's gone around the edges of these quite nicely and picked things up surprisingly well. I'm really pleasantly surprised and pleased with my scanner. <laughs> I'm quite happy that I made that purchase. I'll link that too in this article. I did a little research to figure out what I wanted to do. I'm gonna smooth the edge of this selection just a little bit and then feather it a little bit. Once again, I find that feathering just makes it look nicer. What I mean by feathering is it where it has that just soft, it's, it's not like a sudden cut off of pixels. So I just think it looks better. So I've got that. Now I can hit delete and boom, there you have it. You can see how my artwork's background is all gone. And once again, in this example, it worked really well because I had that white paper, it was all solid. If this had been a really textured background that I painted this on, that would have been a little trickier. I can go in now and refine some of these little areas with that same magic wand. Go ahead and hit deselect. And then I'm just looking to see if I see any other areas that I missed. I don't think so. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my little eraser tool again. You can change the size here. By the way, you can see all my different brush options. I have, these are some watercolor brushes I was playing with earlier and it just has them there because I did that. That's something I used recently. I don't really need to worry about this because this artwork is gonna go in a separate location. By the way, this is another thing you'll see showing up in my Botanical Amy shop. But I'm gonna go ahead and erase that because it's gonna drive me nuts. The other thing I can do, because whenever you scan artwork or even when you make artwork, is you can, you're gonna go and you're gonna make mistakes. So for example, I have this little spot here. I just don't like how that looks. I kind of painted further in than I meant to. So now I can go in with my tablet and my eraser tool selected, and I can just clean that edge up a little bit and make it look a little, whoops, make it look a little better. I'm gonna go ahead, clean that up. Now the only downside of this is you can drive yourself literally insane by spending too much time editing your art. So I would say just to be careful, one of the reasons that hand-painted things do look hand-painted is all of these slight imperfections. So do be careful not to go too overboard. I say that as I'm going into extreme detail on my tiny little artwork. The other thing you wanna do is make sure that you do zoom in as you're working. I've been guilty of this countless times where I'm working on something and I'm zoomed out with my eyes all scrunched up trying to see what I'm doing. Once again, I am very new. I re pretty recently bought this tablet, so I'm still getting used to the feel of it. I will say that this has really made a huge difference. Those of you who are considering getting some sort of tablet, it has helped me with my graphics quite, or with my editing quite a bit, but it does take some getting used to. I'm just gonna go ahead and here. The other tip I would say is when you're doing these erasing, pick your mouse or your tablet pen up. Reason being is if you do make a mistake, if you've erased one giant long area and then you have to hit edit undo, it's gonna be, you're gonna have erased that whole giant area. Whereas if you pick your pen up more often, you have more steps you can undo if you will. So just keep that in mind. Oops. So once again, just going and refining this. 
So, like I said, my first one, I'll stop editing to be pull myself away. I've got this image scan here. Once again, you can see how, here's my original image, there's that paper in the background and you can see how this looks much cleaner. I still need to go in here, I can see that there's this little paper in here that I need to remove. And then I still obviously have my fossil picture here to work on, I have more images to put in. I should note, I also plan on playing with the adjust image adjustments on this. For example, I could go to my levels and I'm sorry, I'm used to going to just Command L. So image adjustments, levels, there it is. And I can go ahead and play with the levels on this picture here. And I do think I'll probably play with these a little bit. I like that little added bit of contrast, especially for printing, I think that would look nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and play with some of these levels with my images once they're on this. I personally like to do some of these image adjustments after they're isolated on their new background because this ammonite, for example, is gonna look different on that paper than it would if I were to be adjusting the image on from this original source here. Speaking of backgrounds, one other thing I want to show you is you can put backgrounds in. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some watercolor paper, for example. I can go to graphics, and I have some watercolor paper. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one, it's a little more cream toned, and I can copy and paste this into the background. Now there's not a whole lot of texture here, but you can see how you can add, if you look closely, if I zoom in, you can see how there is that subtle texture there. So you can do something like that, or you can even go ahead and open up something like this. This canvas will really show up well, this kind of burlapy texture. This might look kind of fun. Now you can really see how that background is removed from this image. And you can see how that blends into that canvas on the background. By the way, another fun fact for you, you can do some fun things like color burn. So it actually looks like it's blending onto the top of this. It actually looks like it's imprinted. Or I could do overlay. I can play with these different blending modes. I just point that out because if I were to put something like this on this canvas, if you painted on a canvas like this, then the texture of that canvas would show through in your paintings. So that's why you want to kind of play with some of these settings when you're doing some of these things. I actually like multiply quite a bit. I just wanted to point that out since that might be a technique you need depending on how you are editing your artwork. Going back, if you have a collage like this with a bunch of, a bunch of little pieces that you're putting together, I find it easiest to copy and paste them into the new paper. If you're using a high quality scanner, that quick selection tool should work quite nicely for you. Don't be surprised if you do need to go ahead, zoom in and do some erasing. Once again, I like these soft edge erasers. You can see how it's this fuzzy, that's what I mean by soft, and you can play with the size here. By the way, you can also adjust that hardness here. If you are erasing a background, like in this image, once again, for erasing your background, I like to use this magic wand tool because the magic wand tool is selecting a color area, meaning if you have white paper or black paper or whatever you happen to have, you can select that color range. Notice there is this tolerance here. You can play with that to help you select more or less of the background. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this was helpful. Once again, if you are doing a lot of editing like this, I would highly recommend that Wacom tablet. I do have a link to that video I mentioned if you are new to using a tablet so that you can get some help and get some tips on how to best use that. And then I'll also put a link. I am really happy with this scanner that I bought and I've found that it's a lot easier to edit my images now that I have this higher quality scanner. There's just a lot better resolution so Photoshop is easier to pick up the edges on my scanned artwork. Enjoy.